Hello friends and welcome back. Today is a Vlogmas Day 17. Let's see what's in the number 17 box. Nice big one. Again, it doesn't feel like it has a big ticket item in there, but you never know. Another mask. This is the Mask Bar Brightening Sheet Mask with Vitamin C. It's illuminating, purifying, contains orange extract and licorice root. Very nice. So two masks so far, plus the other, the Renaissance mask. So, so far we've had three different masks in this advent calendar. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you around my garden. So many people asked me to do this video that I didn't realize that there would be any interest in it. We bought this block about nine years ago. It was an acre and we were moving from a normal standard suburban block to a little bit more space. And what we looked at was this block and we thought it was going to be a flat block. Little did we realize that there was actually a four meter drop from the top left hand corner to the bottom right hand corner. So that meant that we needed to do a fair bit of excavation to make the space usable. So let me show you through our garden what we did and what we've created. All the work was done predominantly by my husband and myself, apart from the heavy lifting, which was the preparation, the excavation of the block and the placement of the big rocks. Apart from that, everything else my husband and I did week by week, weekend by week, and a little bit at a time. It took us over two years to get it. We started from the back end forward. So we placed the tennis court first, then the middle ground and then the pool and then the house and then we did the excavation for the garage and then we did the excavation for the driveway and finished off with all the rocks it was a big project but now that it's all done i'm so glad that it's finished we lived with clay underfoot for so many years in the winter it would be so wet and boggy our, our dog would go out in the backyard and come back with dirty clay paws that she would traipse through the house oh it wasn't pleasant but i'm so glad that it's finished so let me show you around and if you do have any questions pop them in the comments below and i'll try to answer please note that i've been off my feet with knee surgery and prior to that knee pain we've had a very wet winter in melbourne here we've hardly had any sun and so the garden has become a little bit feral there are weeds everywhere i'm aware of it but in the spirit in which the video was asked, I'm showing you my garden. Please enjoy. As you come up through the driveway, the first thing you see at the front of our house is these big bushes of lavender. I think they're English lavender. I actually cut them back this, this winter just gone past and I cut them to the bottom rung of the fence and look how much they've shot up. They've shot up almost to the top rung, which is almost as high as they were when I cut them back this winter. I love lavender and I love the look of the lavender on the front of the fence. I cut the flowers sometimes uh, in the summertime and I use them as display flowers in the house. And I also dry them for winter. I find that they last quite well and they give the house or that area quite a nice scent. I'm also going to try this year to save some of the flowers and dry them and put them in little sachets and put them inside drawers. As we come up the driveway, on the right hand side, we have screening lily pillies. And the driveway goes all the way around to the front of the garage and a little bit beyond, giving us extra parking space for when we have parties. On the side of the driveway, I then have these loose rocks next to the big boulder rocks. I can't remember what they're called. I put it on the screen. I think my husband would know. And then I just have a lot of flowering plants. It's late in the evening, so some of them aren't flowering, but these bushes here, I think there's some sort of pig plant or something, and they just bloom and the whole bush ends up being covered in red flowers. I absolutely adore it. We have a big feature tree in the front garden. This gives us beautiful um, drooping flowers, almost they look like grapes. 
or vines and they're just so scented i absolutely love it i also have loads of magnolias it's one of my favorite trees and i have them scattered about four meters apart along the front fence line but also in front of the house as we walk up to the front of the house to the door we hit this gravel path and we chose gravel because it allowed us to be able to have drainage because we're on heavy clay ground sometimes when we get those really big rains in melbourne the soil remains really wet and it just pools the water pools and so we put little i think these are lily dell toppings and they help in allowing the water to drain into the water pits you've seen my front porch this is my favorite part of the house i like to sit here in the morning or in the evening either with a coffee or with a glass of wine and then facing forward is the horse and cart when we're looking at what to put as a feature in the front garden something that came to mind was an old-fashioned cart or horse buggy because when we bought this Block. there was actually nothing here it used to be just old farmland and so I wanted to pay homage to the area by having something that could have been here a hundred plus years ago and so my husband bought me this cart and we placed it here and then a few years earlier we were down in Sorrento near the beach in Mornington Peninsula and in one of the shops there they had a big, huge stallion that looked a lot like the horse that we have here. But the price was way more than what we could afford. And so then years later, fast forward a few years later, we were in Bali, down in the Ubud area of Bali, where they have artisans. And we asked our driver if there were any wood carvers in the area. And he took us to a warehouse that had all these animals. And we saw this horse, and we actually could buy it and ship it to Melbourne all for like less than half what the price of the horse was in Sorrento that we'd seen years earlier. In the front garden, I also have four fruit trees. I have apricots, nectarines, pears and apple, just because. <laughs> There's no reason. I actually wanted to have oranges because I thought I like the smell of oranges but it didn't pan out. We didn't end up putting any oranges at the front. Continuing along the path to the side of the house, we have screening plants. These are Robusta. The new leaves are red and then they turn green and they have beautiful ball-like flowers. As we walk along the side of the house, there's a side gate and we have big retaining walls. When we first bought our block, we were moving from a traditional residential size block. And we saw this block, which was an acre. And when we looked at it, we could have sworn that it was flat. However, once they took the elevations of the block, we were advised that there was actually a four meter drop in the level from the top left-hand point of the block to the front right-hand point. So the drop in the block wasn't just a traditional forward flowing, it was actually a diagonal forward flowing drop. So we needed to work out a way, make the block work for us. And it involved getting a landscaper to come and give us the elevations required or to cut the block in such a way that it would make it useful. And what that gave us was that on this side of the block we needed to drop about two meters now my husband is very handy and so he put in all these sleepers along the side of the house these are concrete sleepers with metal posts in our previous house we had done everything by tim with timber using timber sleepers and what that meant is that timber sleepers rot and after eight to ten years we had to redo the whole work as we were getting older, we decided to just invest into concrete sleepers so that the job would be done once and we'd be done with it. Along the side of the path, I have these grasses and they're pretty because as they flower right now, you get all these beautiful white flowers that look like butterflies. 
excuse the weeds. <laughs> we have a pizza oven on this side. And the undercover al fresco on the right hand side. The pool and behind the pool we have those colored beach boxes. They're just sheds that we've colored to add a pop of color and just to bring some fun to the backyard. It just alludes to the beach boxes down in Port Cicerento, Brighton area. They're just, one of them is an outside toilet and the other one is just a shed where we keep all the pool furniture in the off season. Along the side, we have all these rocks. The rocks and excavation is what we outsourced. We couldn't do that. It was just too big a job. So all these big boulders were all placed by a company that did the work for us. But the rest, all these paths that you're seeing here, my husband did. The planting of the plants, that's my job. And so we have some more trees here. We have apples, lemons, nectarines, plums. But in Melbourne, we've had such a wet winter that I just haven't been able to come outside and just pull out weeds and trim everything back. Also with my crook knee, I really haven't had the physical ability to be able to do anything. We built these steps were done by a contractor as well because they were very heavy to lift but the smaller step so these big boulders uh, we put down as steps to go up to the next level so here we're going up another meter in elevation these smaller rocks my husband did we'd worked out that it was cheaper for us to buy a bobcat and then sell it once we were done with it than to actually hire a bobcat every other weekend as we needed it to continue doing work. On the side of the garden here, this is the left side where the biggest drop is. In this corner here, we have a fire pit surrounded by big rocks. We use those rocks as seating. I bought some dog pads from Kmart, big, large, rectangular ones that we put on top of the rocks and we sit on that whenever we want to roast marshmallows or just sit out here um, around a fire. I have a fig tree in the corner there and next to it I have a grapefruit tree. There we have more plums and nectarines and underneath the fruit trees there I have a whole load of geraniums. They've overgrown and I need to cut them back. The problem is that every time I cut back one of those plants it fills up my green bin and so it takes me a week to then have to get the bin emptied and then I have to come back out and cut another plant. And it's just very time consuming and slow. And because we've had so much rain this winter, I haven't been able to keep on top of it and cut one back. So they're really all overgrown and they need some attention. Here is an apricot tree. It looks like we might, fingers crossed, with the wild weather we've had in Melbourne, I've lost a lot of the fruit from my trees. And what the weather hasn't dropped, the birds have eaten. I have a cherry tree here. And last year at this time, we had beautiful red cherries that I turned into cherry jam and ate some. This year, big black crows found them before they were anywhere near ripe and just ate them all. You can see here, they left us the pips hanging on the tree. Very generous of them. Heading up the path, you see there's more steps, which means that there's another cut in the level of the ground. We have a path that goes all around the tennis court. And as you see facing ahead, there are more retaining walls. Now we're getting to the, close to the highest point of our block. Yeah, I have a beautiful lemon tree that I really need to take care of because the wild weather has just done a bit of damage to it. I have some passion fruit up here that's doing really well. It's thriving. It's creating loads of flowers but I need some bees to pollinate the flowers. So I've been told to put some lavender down here. The lavender will attract the bees and they'll pollinate the passion fruit. Please ignore the weeds. It's doing my head in seeing it like this, but I'll get to it probably after Christmas. More fruit trees. And here is the highest part of the block. You can see that at this elevation, we had to come down two meters. 
all along the perimeter of the fence, we have screening plants to provide privacy. And these are robusta of some sort. We also have seven yellow box eucalyptus trees. When we bought the block in the middle of the tennis court, there was this dead, burnt out, hollowed yellow box tree. In order for us to be able to remove it, the council requested that we plant six extra trees of the same, which we did. So these trees have been here now eight years. We've tried to keep the block as low maintenance as possible, but we didn't realize that with an acre, unless you concrete the whole block, you're always going to have work to do. These grasses, after they flower, they need to be cut back. These daisies, after they flower, they have to be cut back. And weeds are rampant oh, and have to be pulled out. That's for another day. So if you have any questions about my garden, please put them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Right, let's open day 17. I can't believe this. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, seven days left until Christmas. I can't believe it. I really don't know where this year has gone. Let's hit number 17 and see what kind of white is in there today. It is a red wood-fired Heathcote Cabernet Sauvignon 2020. Heathcote Cabernet Sauvignon produces deep colored, richly flavored soft red wine. The climate and deep red soil produces the perfect red wine to accompany char grilled meats and artisan wood fired pizza sourced from our vineyards at, I think it says Corrup, in northern Heathcote. The wine is dense and complex with ripe dark fruits, cedar wood and balance. Sounds delicious. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you're new. I hope you're having a fabulous day and the sun is shining wherever you are. Thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.